Now, Nigerian entrepreneurs and investors have been taxed to emulate the Dangote Industries Limited by channeling their ideas and resources towards creating firm anchors of enduring economic prosperity for the nation through massive investments in worthy enterprises. President Muhammad Buhari, who drew the challenge, well granted an audience to the chairman and board of directors of Dangote Group of Companies, promised to sustain efforts at implementing needed reforms towards improving the ease of doing business. Now, State House correspondent Adam Sambu has details on that story. Exactly one month ago, President Muhammad Buhari at Ipeju Leki inaugurated the new $2.5 billion Dangote fertilizer plan, regarded as Africa's largest granulated urea fertilizer complex and the second largest of such plants in the world. Receiving the chairman and board of directors of Dangote Industries Limited on a thank you visit for the honor done to them, the president maintains that the coming on stream of the fertilizer plant was a most welcome booster to his administration's strategy towards achieving food security and reducing poverty. Given recent developments globally, especially the effect of the ongoing war in Europe on worldwide food supply chain, I must commend your foresight for bringing the plant into operation at the time you did. I know that market realities will bring pressure to bear on Dangote Fertilizer Limited to seek to meet the demands of your export customers. However, given your group's well-known patriotic vision, I am confident that your board will continue to accord priority to meet local demands of our farmers. Apart from noting the scope and scale of the business empire of Dangote Group and its positive impact on the nation's economy, the president is also delighted that the company is also committed to not only growing existing investments to enhance wealth and job creation, but also seeking new opportunities to help Nigeria's economic diversification drive. I want to assure you that the government will do everything possible to enhance development in infrastructure, especially in energy and transportation sectors. We will also continue to implement needed reforms in the public service to significantly improve the ease of doing business. Entrepreneurs such as Raja Aleko Dangote are unique gifts to their societies and the institution they build, and they often become the pillars of stable and during prosperous economies. The chairman of Dangote Group, Aliko Dangote, had told the president that despite the unprecedented challenges faced, especially over the past five years, Dangote Industries Limited remains strongly committed to the pursuit of its vision to becoming the leading provider of the people's essential needs in food, shelter, and energy services. Our belief is that our country has the potential to be a strong industrial nation capable of not only meeting its basic needs of our citizens, but making significant contributions to Africa's economic transformation. We firmly believe that Nigeria will be the powerhouse of the continent's inclusive and sustainable economic development through industrialization and strategic diversification. He described President Buhari's unequivocal commitment to the creation of an inclusive, diversified, and resilient economy based on the promotion of domestic productive capacity as a source of great strength and encouragement. Dangote Group also subscribes fully to the economic policy stance of the government aimed at ensuring that the nation produces what it consumes and consumes what it produces, which it believes is a call to action. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. And away from business, President Muhammad Buhari says no responsive and responsible governments can ignore the role of religious and traditional rulers in tackling insecurity in the country. Speaking at an iftar dinner with religious and traditional rulers, the president said his administration will continue to count on the invaluable 
invaluable advice and guidance of members of the revered institutions towards improving the current security challenges in the country. He said moving Nigeria forward remains a collective responsibility and therefore urge leaders at all levels to contribute meaningfully in making the country a better place. Today, insecurity is one of the greatest challenges facing Nigeria's existence. This administration has invested more resources than any other to tackle insecurity. We have acquired advanced equipment for our armed forces and the police to strengthen their capacity to confront terrorism and banditry. We have made adequate budgetary allocations for security. Whatever the security agencies request, I made it available to them immediately. But insecurity is a worldwide phenomenon. The cure and the answer is for all sections of society to do their bit and confront the criminals head on. The success of our armed forces and other security forces also depends on intelligence about the activities of bandits and terrorists. The owner of Ife Obade, Anita Ogunzi, and the General Secretary of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Joseph Daramola, thank the President for demonstrating high sense of responsibility in the discharge of duties. The Oni in particular commended the federal government for the way and manner the COVID-19 pandemic was promptly responded to and contained in the country. There are so many positive things to celebrate. Yes, there are challenges, but let us look at more of our strengths than our weaknesses. Above all, my brother kings, my brother monarchs, from the north all the way to the southern Nigeria, we will continue to pray for you. We will continue to do what we are supposed to do. Any key decision making in this country, one way or the other, you carry us along. On this note, I want to use this medium to say a true appreciation for you and to you, and keep up the good work. Now, First Lady of Nigeria, Aisha Buhari, has enjoined the spouses of the Nigerian legislators to continue using their soft power in convincing their husbands to support more gender-friendly legislations to ensure more women participate in governance and other decision-making processes. State House correspondent Aliu Kabir reports that the First Lady stated this during the breaking of Ramadan fast in honor of the female legislators as well as the spouses of the Nigerian lawmakers and other Nigerian women. Distinguished guests, today's iftar is deliberately planned to create an opportunity to dine and understand ourselves as wives mothers and leaders of this nation. Our role as partners in progress is key to the development of this nation, particularly in fostering peace and unity in the country. I would therefore like to encourage us all not to relent on our efforts and support each other, especially in making the right choices in choosing our leaders. When we work together and understand each other, our future and the future of our children becomes secure. We have laughed and chatted with one another. We've exchanged numbers. We've interacted with one another, especially at this time, a time of devotion, a time of meditation, and a time of prayer. A lot of things come up in our mind for ourselves, our families, and our nation. Women from all walks of life, including the Minister of Women Affairs, Pauline Tallinn, and the wife of the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Salama Tukbajabiamila, promise to continue stirring the advocacy of women emancipation in Nigeria, particularly the realization of the affirmative action. It's only about involving women in the decision-making process, but empowerment is also about accepting women's thoughts and viewpoints. In this regard, 
It gives me great pleasure knowing that the Ninth Assembly has pushed for two landmark bills, the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act and the Gender Equality Opportunity Bill. We want you to please handhold us from here. As our women come out to aspire, let it not stop at aspiration. Let it transcend to candidacy and from candidacy to delivering women who will effectively represent Nigeria. The annual iftar was also attended by the former first lady of Niger Republic, Laila Malika Yusufu. Now, after meeting with the All Progressives Congress governors and members of the National Assembly, APC Kukas, Vice President Jimmy Shibajo, in continuation of his consultation, meets with the Oyo State delegates to the party's national convention coming up soon. State House correspondent Gideon Onifadi brings us the details. We apologize for the lack of audio in that report. Moving on now, the United Nations World Tourism Organization has awarded 100 Tourism Online Academy scholarships to Nigerians willing to undertake basic training in the field of tourism. This gesture comes on the heels of Nigeria signing an agreement to host the maiden UNWTO Global Conference on Cultural Tourism and Creative Industry, expected to be held in Lagos November this year. Anthony Forson has the reports. It was an informal one, a dinner hosted by the UNWTO in honor of the minister and his delegation. Secretary General of the organization, Zurab Pololikashvili, used the opportunity to formally present the offer to the minister. He said the World Tourism Organization recognizes the efforts of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and in particular the minister's interest to empower youths and boost quality education, hence the award of the scholarship. Pololi Kashvili explained that the scholarship will lead to the award of certificate in introduction to tourism industry management. Responding to the scholarship offer, Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohamed expressed same criteria for selecting beneficiaries will be announced soon. The idea is to get uh, young people to get interested in tourism early in life and learn the basic uh, tools of tourism uh, in the manner that many of them will be encouraged to uh, understand what tourism is all about and probably choose tourism as a profession. But it's being given to the Nigeria recognition of uh, the ministry's uh, contribution to UNWTO, our contribution to the growth of tourism, our passion, you know, and commitment to tourism. The UNWTO Online Academy would give us the criteria, we will publish the criteria, and we will now, uh, you know, uh, advertise or, you know, use whatever method, you know, is possible working with other, uh, you know, agencies under the tourism and culture uh, ministry to uh, choose uh, the best 100 um, uh, people that will benefit from this uh, grant. Of course, we are going to also work you know, closely with uh, uh, professional association organizations. The UNWTO Tourism Scholarship is a partnership between the World Tourism Organization and IE University in Madrid, Spain. Anthony Forson, NTA News. To the National Assembly now, where the House of Representatives is seeking answers from relevant authorities on why refineries in the country have remained shut since 2019. The Port Harcourt, Wari and Kaduna refineries have since 2010 been operating at a loss and their closure is said to be taking a toll on the economy. I was there for NTA News at the investigative hearing. The resumed sitting of the committee, the chairman, Abdul Ghani Jensen, says Federal government has expended huge sums of money to rehabilitate the Port Harcourt, Kaduna and Wari refineries to reduce the financial burden of fuel imports, but also no avail. The committee is aware that the NNPC recently awarded contracts for rehabilitation of refineries in the following sums. Wari, 900 million. Port Harcourt, 
1.5 billion dollars. Kaduna, 1.3 million dollars. From the information available to us here, all the figures mentioned, the contracts have been awarded, a job completed in our records and in our books. But we are wondering why the refineries are not working. I want to teach you not to run around importation of refined petroleum products when we have four refineries in the country. The ad hoc committee says the non-appearance of the Minister of State Petroleum Resources, the group managing director of the Nigeria National Petroleum Company, and the general managers of the three refineries is stalling the investigation. The committee gave the concerned government agencies one week to appear and make available all information and documents requested. The ad hoc committee was set up to determine the true state of refineries, asserting the actual cause of rehabilitation and what is needed to have them function at maximum capacity from the National Assembly. The Nigeria Governors Forum has expressed its commitment to intensify war against illicit drug trafficking and abuse, a lead factor for growing cases of insecurity in parts of the country. The forum, in its fourth teleconference in the year, promised to strengthen the collaboration with NDLEA to tackle the menace head-on and prosecute peddlers no matter their status in the society to enhance operational synergy. Nigeria Governors Forum also resolved to combat outbreaks of Lassa fever, measles and cases of meningitis in parts of the country and pledged to sustain immunization and strengthen epidemic preparedness and response strategy with the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency and global partners. NGF says it will improve public financial management outcomes and promote adoption of e-procurements and open contracts in data standards under state transparency, accountability and sustainability. Celebrated within the United Nations 2020-2030 Decade on Ecosystem Restoration, International Earth Day 2022 is being commemorated to promote harmony with nature and the Earth. On Nengi Fine Face has the report. Climate change, which is man made changes to nature, as well as crimes that disrupt biological diversity, is accelerating the speed of destruction of the planet. Celebrating International Earth Day this year, 2022, serves as a reminder for the global community to shift to a sustainable economy that works for people and planet. Today, the Earth is facing a triple planetary crisis, climate disruption, nature and biodiversity loss, pollution and waste. Let us make sure our leaders bring the ambition and action needed to address our triple planetary emergency. Because we have only one Mother Earth, we must do everything we can to protect her. In Nigeria, there is a renewed advocacy for the promotion of natural ecosystems which are also clean economic sources for the nation. To reduce methane use and emissions that, that come from agriculture, the world takes care of us and wants to take care of us if we can take care of it. We want our children to live without plastic in their blood. We want our children to, to, be, to breathe clean air. Our earth, because it is just this one earth that we have, and we want to make sure we protect it for the future, for our generation and the generations to come. Earth Day 2022 also speaks to promote the restoration of damaged ecosystems to reduce poverty and combat climate change. Onengiye Fine Face, NT News. To religious matters now, Islamic scholars have advised Muslims to intensify prayers, especially during the last 10 days of Ramadan, as the reward and benefits could turn around any misfortune a nation might be facing. In this report, Governor Ta'ala takes a look at the significance of the last 10 days in which the Night of Majesty, believed by Muslims to be, is worth a thousand months. It is that period again. The last 10 days of Ramadan is there as Laylat al-Qadr, meaning the Night of Majesty, which is described in the Holy Quran as far better than a thousand months. It is also within this period that the doors of paradise are said to be opened, and angels descend closer to the world, being a period of mercy and blessings. Here are Islamic scholars on the significance of the last ten days of Ramadan. Allah in his infinite mercy 
made mention in the Holy Quran that Quran was revealed in the night of majesty. That is Laylatul Qadr. So Laylatul Qadr is between this last 10 days. Anybody that call on Allah at that time, Allah will answer his prayer. Even non-Muslim, that they say, because they know God exists, and they say, God, this is what we want, Allah will give it to them. It is now a challenge to us, the Muslims, that do not waste your time. Some Muslims also speak on how they intend to utilize the period. So we should also enable to include our country, Nigeria, in our prayers, our leaders, and in the coming election. Is I pray for peace in Nigeria. The rewards are too enticing for the faithful to intensify worship with the hope of witnessing Laylatul Qadr, which is expected to fall on any of the odd nights of the last 10 days. In Abuja, Garba Natala, NTA News. And joining me in the studio for additional information on the last 10 days of Ramadan is the Chief Imam of Area 10 Jumat Mosque, Garuki Abuja, Yahya Garba Ali Yulawi. Thank you for joining us on Nationwide. Thank you so much. Now, um, what is the significance of the last 10 days of the Ramadan to the Islamic faith? Uh, Alhamdulillah, the significance that is important or the benefits of the uh, last 10 days of Ramadan to the Muslim Ummah uh, is something that you can never overemphasize. To, why? Because uh, it is very important, at least to be important, this is once in your lifetime. And Alhamdulillah, we have opportunity to have it, even if it is two, three, four, some week, even have it five times, ten times, depend on the years Allah SWT has given you in this life. Now, why we say it is highly important? Because uh, this night, that is considered the night hours, they are the most important night in the whole three, uh, 360 days. Uh, that is what the scholar says. Why? Because because of the night, uh, the, the, the little qadr, that is the night of power, night of decree, night of majesty. That night is considered to be khayrum uh, al that is more than 1,000 uh, months of devotion, that equivalent to 83, six months, yes. Now, uh, Laylatul Qadr, also known as uh, Night of Majesty. Yes. How can one attain that night? You've uh, spoken of the yes. importance. Yes. Very important. There, now, one need to perfect himself. One need to devote and increase in devotion and prayers. One it is it uh, these uh, days. Uh, why? Because to achieve and to attain the uh, what is prescribed for those who have been able to come out midnight and perform prayers. Midnight prayers is paramount there. It's the, it's the key. Why? Because Laylatul Qadr, we are talking about Laylatul Qadr, that's Qiyamul Layl. Wake up uh, and pray. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been reported from uh, Umina Aisha that when it is last uh, 10 days of Ramadan, he used to wake up his family and he used to start in his belts. That is, he used to hard work. Look at, he has been forgiven all his sin, but he wants to come closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala by all means that is uh, most especially that is the prayers and he used to uh, 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 pray all night that is the prophet and now we are asked to emulate him i want to have our sin forgiven and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it one of the odd numbers so we should try and strive to perfect it when it is that is 21st uh, 23rd 25th 27th and 29th people should seek the night of majesty, night of power on that night. Very now, important. Yeah, Muslims are encouraged to engage in uh, several voluntary uh, activities of uh, the the Islamic faith yes. during the blessed months of yes. Ramadan. Now, there are two categories of um, nafila prayers that are carried out by Muslims. That is, we have the tahajjud, we have um, the tarawih prayers. Now, what is the difference between these two? Yes, uh, actually the names uh, uh, differentiate between the two, the, the Tahajjud and Taraweeh. Tahajjud is all about, that is midnight prayers. And Taraweeh is the one that is coming around 8 o'clock. That is, uh, is considered to be lesser and to be softened surface like this that it is not that deep it is not that long considered to what in Tahajjud. but they are all considered as qiyamul layl when we say qiyamul layl is encompassed that yes you have work up and pray voluntary or that is no feel that you are seeking allah's mercy and pleasure and may he accept your prayers 
Now, should one do both during the last 10 days or you can just do your tarawi or you can just go for the sahajud? Why not? You can do both. You can even add. How? After doing the tarawi, you come and eat and maybe you sleep waiting for tahajid. After tahajid, you may finish before 4 o'clock and you want to add and you have your own personal issues you want to say it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is before uh, fajr. You can do it. After the imam has finished his own, mark you, don't do two twitter at the same time. If you are able to do witr with your imam in tahajjud, don't come and do an rawan. But you can do two raka, two raka, two raka and supplicate. Thank you very much, uh, Imam Yahya Garba and Yulawi for the uh, additional information no on problem. the last 10 days of it's, Ramadan. It's, it's my pleasure. Thank Love you very you. much. Thank you so much you. and God bless you. Now, Nationwide continues in our Lagos studio with Adiola. It's over to you, Adiola. Thank you, Lami. And still on the blessed month of Ramadan, the last 10 days of Ramadan remains crucial to all Muslim faithful as it provides time to reflect, search deep into the Quran for more knowledge with a view to seeking closeness to Allah. While the period is regarded as sacred and an important obligation for Muslims, scholars are, have emphasized on the need for the holy month to reflect in character and spiritual life of all. Abuladi Salami reports. The long month spiritual exercise stems from Allah's injunction in the Holy Quran, which mandates Muslim faithful to observe the Ramadan fast. Part of best practice in this holy month is constant recitation of the Quran, which was revealed to Prophet Muhammad, peace be unto him, in the month of Ramadan. One is fortunate of being up and prayer, you know, in that night, it is equivalent to worshipping Allah for more than, more than 1,000 months. The last 10 days of the fasting exercise is a prophetic tradition for the faithful to engage in seclusion or itkaf in obedience to Allah's instruction. We should uh, use the opportunity effectively. We should wake up in the night. We should ask favor from Allah. And uh, we should uh, also encourage one another, you know, in the act of ibadah. A prophetic prayer point is to be emphasized during this period to precede the celebration of Eid al-Fitr. The activities to climax it in the last 10 days intensify what we have been doing before. In fact, if I can say triple what I've been doing before because of the more benefits it needs. Is the Laylatul Qadr. We are searching for Laylatul Qadr in the last 10 days of Ramadan. Inshallah, if we get it, Allah will fulfill our desires. While it is permissible to celebrate Eid al-Fitri, scholars advised Muslims of the obligations after the early month of Ramadan. In Lagos, Abola Salami, NTA News. And now from religious, we go to the legislative uh, matters. Lagos State House of Assembly has passed a bill to amend public petition, anti-corruption and transparency commission law. The bill was passed at a plenary session presided over by the deputy speaker, Wasiwe Shilokong Sani in Lagos. Musa Toliat reports. The public petition and anti-corruption amendment bill was passed at the plenary session after the bill scaled the third reading on the floor of the assembly. Majority Leader Sanai Agumbiade moved the motion for the passage of the bill. With your kind permission, Mr. Speaker, I move that the Labor State Public Petitions and Anti-Corruption Amendment Bill 2022 be read for the third time. It gives me a great pleasure to read for the third time a bill for a law to amend the Lagos State Public Complaints and Anti-Corruption, Public Complaints, Anti-Corruption and Transparency Commission Law 2021. For a law to amend the Lagos State Public Petitions, Anti-Corruption and Transparency Commission Law to be passed into law. All those in favor say, eh? Hey. All those who are against say, eh? They have it. The forthcoming APC party primaries and Islamic Eid holiday 
that has stated the adjournment of sitting at the Lagos State House of Assembly till June 2nd this year. In Lagos, Musa Tolian, NTA News. Those are the stories from Lagos this time, but uh, remember that you can follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on uh, YouTube at NTA News Online. You can visit our Facebook page at NTA Network News. Our Twitter handle is at NTA News Now and on Instagram, NTA Network for updates. We will take our first break and when we return, Mina in Enugu will give us stories from that zone to stay on to Nationwide. The Nigerian aviation sector is rapidly growing with the construction of new international airport terminals in several regions of the country. The new Murtala Mohammed International Airport has an estimated passenger increase of 30 million annually and 15 million for Inamdi Azikwe International Airport, Abuja. Malam Aminu Kano International Airport is also expected to open new frontiers for the region with more travel capacity for the annual HAD, while the new Akanu Ibiam International Airport, Enugu, avails more business opportunities connecting the industrial cities in the region to the world. These new terminals beat world-class standards with enabling infrastructure that aid air travel, tourism, and the eventual growth of the country's GDP. Open up commerce and, of course, link us to uh, international uh, societies. People from international community will come here to do business, and then that will bring in more revenue to the states. Now, distances can be seamlessly covered as Nigeria keeps raising its bar to suit global infrastructure standards. The broadcast media ecosystem is dynamic and requires continuous training for practitioners to perform optimally. NTA Television College JAWS invites relevant officers to the following specially packaged training programs. Protocol Event Management and Public Relations, date 2nd May to 13th May 2022, two weeks. Video Camera Maintenance, date 16th May to 27th May 2022, two weeks. Basic Television Production Techniques, Date 16th May to 10th June 2022, four weeks. Photojournalism and photography. Date 6th June to 1st July 2022, four weeks. Intermediate online news reporting skills. Date 4th July to 29th July 2022, four weeks. Sports coverage and reporting skills in the mass media. Date 4th July to 15th July 2022, two weeks. The course fee for two weeks courses is 150,000 Naira per participant. While the fee for four weeks courses is 180,000 Naira only, accommodation inclusive, the venue for all courses is the serene and secure environment of NTA Television College near Old Government House, Rayfield, Jaws. For more inquiries, please call 0803-079-5335 or 0806-9809807. NTA Television College, Jaws, training you to be the best you want to be. I bring you wonderful news. The village headmaster is coming back to your screen. It's called Oja Village. We know how to attack And I know that people, you too, you are getting a lot of orders. I love you so much. And how did I give you the impression? 50 year anniversary. You mean anniversary? I think it's anniversary I talk with that now. Good evening and welcome to Enugu. Resolve to utilize the opportunity provided by the training and the startup packs to improve lives as well as contribute meaningfully to the Nigerian economy will actualize the policy objectives of the federal government. These were the words of the Director General Industrial Training Fund, Dr. Joseph Ari, to the beneficiaries of its 2021 National Industrial Skills Development Program, recently rounded off in Enugu. Chinewe reports. Uh, all the things you need to put in place when you are 
doing event management and rendering patron services for the public consumption. I thought that plumbers were anyhow people, but I never knew that plumbers are people that you cannot join with. Plumbers are builders. Cause is all Chiku Eze and Wisdom Mubani are among the 270 beneficiaries of the 2021 National Industrial Skills Development Program of the Industrial Training Fund, ITF. For three months, these beneficiaries in Enugu State were trained in various skills and trades. The Director General Industrial Training Fund says the program was initiated to, among other things, facilitate the achievement of the federal government's policy on job and wealth creation. ITF is majorly concerned to ensure that the Nigerian youth have skills, they acquire skills that we get themselves gainfully employed, and they will also be impactful to the Nigerian nation. Having been equipped with the necessary skills, certificates, and startup packs, the beneficiaries of the program can now thrive as employers of labor or as entrepreneurs. So we have a way we call the tracking system. We have the addresses, we have their phone numbers. We call them once in a while to know how they are faring. Since the inception of the program, 3,905 Nigerian youths have been equipped with skills in various trades in Enugu, Chinenye, Ngoye, NTA News. The recent increase in domestic violence, especially among married couples, is considered a gross violation of human rights and must be urgently tackled to avoid severe consequences in the society. This is the view of some residents of Oweri who condemned the negative trend. Rina Obasi tells us more. The increasing rate of domestic violence, especially among couples, has become a source of worry. Just recently, the social media was awash with the story of the demise of a renowned gospel singer, Osna Chibachuku, who was alleged to have been abused by her husband, resulting to her death. This is one out of many cases of the ugly trend, which is attracting reactions from different quarters. Some theories describe domestic violence as barbaric, attributing it to lack of proper home training. A young man comes out and sees a beautiful lady, and what have you, he decided to marry. Others marry because of, uh, because of politics, marrying from a wealthy family or a kingly family, so that he, ha he will have a political advantage. Uh, others marry because of money. So those things have nothing to do with what God calls marriage. People are so impatient with one another that they cannot wait to see the good coming out of something. Price activists say the solution to domestic violence begins with speaking up. It could be physical, it could be verbal, it could be financial deprivation. It's a sign of domestic violence. Speak out. The fact remains that domestic violence leaves a dent in the psychological makeup of the victim, which takes a negative turn on the society. Hence, they need to put an end to it. In Owari, Rina, obviously, NTA News. And that's a bit from here. It's back to Lame in Abuja for a continuation of Nation World. Many thanks, Mina. Now, the president's Ebele, Ebele Anyichuk's foundation, Dr. Ifa Anyichukuma Udi, has assured the people of Ebony State that he will continue to use his foundation to impact on the people's lives positively across the 13 council areas of the state. Dr. Odi stated this during his birthday anniversary, which coincided with the 2022 Easter celebration at the Anyoma Isu Isokoma Onisha local government area of the state. Kanayo Okoro reports that Dr. Odi is a governorship aspirant of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in the state. It wants to show solidarity and celebrate one of their own that have worked tirelessly to post smiles on their faces that made the present press groups to converge on a Canada International Airport in Igu to receive Dr. Ifan Chikuma Odi as he marked his 45th birthday. <laughs> Addressing the people at his country home, celebrants 
Dr. Ipanyachikoma Odin said he has dedicated his life to live for the people, stressing that in the years ahead, he will consolidate on his philanthropic gestures. My message to you today, today I'm here, on the occasion of my birthday, which coincides with the Holy Easter celebration. It's a message of hope to all Ebonians. I'm prepared to put my best in defense of the interest of the people, and I'm convinced that God shall see us through. Some of the people at the event, including Kubana chief priest, while wishing him well, pledged to support his political aspiration. So, and I want all of you guys to come together and support this man because he's taking the pony to the next level. We are coming to great wealth for the people. This celebration today, God is going to inspire you and empower you to do more. We are going to offer to reduce graduate unemployment in the state to zero. That is our wish for you. Daddy, look around. It shows that people are very much in love with you. It shows that people appreciate all you've been doing around the state. Cutting of birthday cake and musical tunes. Climbers the event. Jesus. In a bakaliki, Kana Yokuro, NTA News. And from Ebonyi, we move to Sokoto, where Asmao will be our guide on nationwide. It's over to you, Asmao. Many thanks, Lami. Good evening and welcome to Sokoto on Nationwide. The federal government has reiterated commitment to support irrigation farming in the country. The Director, Irrigation and Drainage Department, Federal Ministry of Water Resources, Mrs. Esther Oyeronke Olunei, restated the commitment while distributing tube wells and water pumps to irrigation farmers in Kebi State. Usman Abdullah Shehu has the report. Dozens of registered farmers converge on the office premises of the Rofolda Project Rima in Burning Kebi for the free support of completed tube wells and water pumps machines to improve their irrigation activities. The Director, Irrigation and Drainage Department, Federal Ministry of Water Resources, Mrs. Esther Oyeronke Olunui, said the project is aimed to bring 700 hectares of land under irrigation with 8,400 participating farmers as target beneficiaries, a step to alleviate poverty and improve food security in the country. This will provide employment for the beneficiaries. It will improve their life livelihood. It will uh, reduce rural urban migration. It will also stem insecurity. Because when people are actively engaged, they won't be thinking of negative things to be done. The managing director of Sokoto Rimari by Basin Development Authority, Buhari Bature, said the project is in phases and the ministry will continue to empower as many farmers as possible in complementing federal government determination to attain the national food security and sufficiency. For the farmers are very familiar with how to use it because they have been using it. I will advise them to use it effectively to make sure that the effort is not wasted. Many in their goodwill messages acknowledge President Muhammadu Buhari's administration's determination in the agricultural sector of the country. Some of the beneficiaries express appreciation to the remarkable gesture. Sumana Abdullah Shehu, NTA News. Zamfara state government has reaffirmed its commitment to settle medical bills of terrorist attack victims across the state with a view to mitigating their suffering. The State Commissioner for Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Faika Ahmad, stated this while presenting cash assistance to one of the survivors of the recent terrorist attack in Bungudu local government area of the state who is currently receiving medical attention. Jamilu Ibrahim has more. Some terrorists recently attacked Tungaramasu community in Bungudu local government area of Zamfara state, where they killed many people and destroyed property worth millions of naira. One of the victims, Dharao Ismail, who was shot in her private part and also sustained a fracture on her right leg, is currently receiving treatment at Yerima Mbakura Specialist Hospital, Gusau. She was brought to this facility with injury impact. Her vulva has been destroyed completely and she sustained fracture on the femur, on the right femur. So we have been seeking for help. This prompted Zamfara state government to settle all the medical bill of the patient as well as donated some cash to her. 
Zamfara State Commissioner for Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Paika Ahmad, presented the donation on behalf of the state government. So now we Although we have paid the hospital bills in full, we have paid for all the surgeries because she requires two surgeries apparently from the discussion I had with the doctor. But um, they are also here to give her some uh, money. The money is just to support her financially. The commissioner reiterated Zangfari State Government's commitment to continue to settle medical bills of all victims of terrorism across the state. Meanwhile, Zangfari State Ministry for Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development has presented cash and some other relief items to other patients currently receiving treatment at the hospital. There are many items inside that bag. We have soft and uh, milk as well as my clean and rafa and the other items. The patients who are full of gratitude to Zamfara State Government for the concern also prayed for the restoration of lasting peace in the state and the country as a whole. In Gusau, Jamilu Ibrahim, NTA News. And a quick reminder that you can follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on YouTube channel NTA News Online. You can also visit our Twitter at NTA News Now our Facebook page, NTN Network News, and Instagram at NTN Network for updates. And that's it from here. Nationwide will continue with Susan in Makodi right after these messages. Please stay. A new edition of TV Guide is out, exclusively with Professor Umar Garba Dambata, Executive Chairman of the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC. We have unveiled the 622 as a toll pre line through which consumers can be able to lodge their complaints. And we have provided introduced the 112 as the national emergency number. This edition is a compendium of mind glowing stories for your reading pleasure, ranging from technology, entertainment, economy, media, politics, family, and lots more. Pick up your copy and get abreast with issues and trending features within our space. TV Guide, very incisive, very educative and compelling. Grab a copy at the vendor near you or any NTA station nationwide. TV Guide, your indispensable companion. Candidates who are interested in gaining admission into NTA Television College JOS for the 2021-2022 two-year National Innovation Diploma Program are to apply for admission through the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board JAM. The courses available for application include film and television production, broadcast journalism, and television engineering technology. Such candidates must have a minimum of five O-level credits in relevant subjects including English language and mathematics. For more information, please contact NTA Television College, JAWS, or the marketing department of any NTA station nationwide. Registrar, announcer. From dusk to dawn, 24 hours a day, NTA International is with you in your living room, office, everywhere and anywhere. We provide the company you desire in terms of balanced and up-to-date news, programs and the best of entertainment. Tune in to DSTV Channel 251, Go TV Channel 91, Preview UK Channel 264 or you can download www.regentv.co.uk, Apple, iOS or Android. You can also see us on Facebook and YouTube for quality content on the go. NTA International, Africa's window to the world.
Thank you for joining us in Makudi. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahya, says the Nigerian Army will continue to boost troops' morale and give priority to their well being. He said this at the first 2022 project management workshop and inauguration of some projects at the Nigerian Army School of Military Engineering, NASME, in Makudi. Sandra Dorwese Akema reports that the Chief of Army Staff was represented by the Chief of Logistics, Major General Omo Tomilola Akintadi. That was the Chief of Logistics, Major General Omoto Milola Akintade, at the Nigerian Army School of Military Engineering during the inauguration of a new signpost and planting of trees at the barracks. This inauguration followed by a workshop that capacity development for efficient project management in the Nigerian Army, according to the Chief of Army Staff, is to build a professional Nigerian Army ready to accomplish assigned missions within a joint environment in defense of Nigeria. He assured that his vision has informed the construction and rehabilitation of numerous facilities across the Nigerian Army formations, which ranges from accommodation, office complexes, training schools and other support facilities. We have our barracks all over Nigeria and uh, we build our barracks and we also maintain them. And uh, up till now, there has not been any case of any collapse of any building in the barracks. As a step towards building the human resources that will be required for the Nigerian Army engineer to drive its strategy for participation in national development. The event also featured presentations from resource persons within and outside the military. In Makudi, Sandra Luisi Akeme. NTA News. Some subscribers in Makudi have expressed displeasure over the poor quality of service they have been experiencing during the noon SIM linkage exercise. Correspondent Symbiat Agbaji reports that those with bad lines for non compliance with the SIM registration policy say they are experiencing a torturous time in efforts to normalize the situation. In the year 2020, Communications Minister Isa Pantami announced 30 December as deadline for NIN SIM linkage. Since then, the deadline has been extended nine times to allow more Nigerians enroll. On the 4th of April this year, many Nigerians were barred from making calls from their SIM cards following the federal government's directive that failure to link their national identity number NIN to their phone numbers by users be so sanctioned. Consequently, many phone users have thronged offices of the National Identity Management Commission, NIMSI, and telecom operators to have their lines unbarred. There have been several complaints of lines who have remained bad even after the compliance of NIN same linkage. Some Makudi residents who are making frantic efforts to have their lines reconnected say they were told by staff of NIMSI to be patient as the process of uploading data to the portal takes at least a week as opposed to one to three days usually required as a result of traffic caused by bad telecom subscribers. I mean, this is the second week. I'm still expectant that I will come out and uh, bring my name. When I came here, I put a new car, Peter, this way. Then, within my voters' card, I put Peter, new car, Amu. So I swept the names. The name has been changed. I was asked to that I should come back by 12, that the number, the, my picture, capture is not familiar to the one currently, which I was like trying to let them understand that I'm no longer younger. Officials of NIMSI and telecom operators declined comments when NTA News approached their offices on the various complaints by subscribers. In Makudi, Simbiat Agbaji, NTA News. 
And that's it from Makude. It's back to Lami in Abuja for the concluding part of NTA Nationwide. Thank you, Susan. And that's all we have time for Nationwide for today. We thank you for watching. Join us at 7 and 9 for more reports. <laughs>